Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ, and after getting distracted by other videos for way too long, we're back for the fourth episode of our Sinnoh Random Card Challenge. It's been quite a while, but last time out we earned a couple of gym badges and took down Barry in Pistoria City. We're starting today with a battle against Crasher Wake. We'll need a team of three for this one, so let's draw some cards. Against the Pistoria Gym Leader, we're going to be using Ekans, Duskull, and Persian. That's not the best team, but at least we don't have any water weaknesses. Let's see what moves we'll be working with here. Up first, we've got Babu the Persian, who's at level 37, with the moves Fake Out, Bite, Slash, and Thunder. Having an Electric-type move on hand is a massive help here, but Wake still has a Quagsire who's immune. Next up, at level 34, we've got Crossbones the Duskull, who's got Nightshade, Confuse Ray, Curse, and Will-O-Wisp. Finally, we've got Raid of the Ekans at level 33, and her moveset's made up of Bite, Glare, Screech, and Poison Sting. Let's see what this team can do. The battle begins with Wake's Gyarados facing off against Persian. Intimidate lowers Babu's attack stat, but that won't affect Thunder. The Electric Crack zaps Gyarados, knocking him out in one and taking Wake down to two. The Pistoria Gym Leader calls on his Floatzel next, which suits Persian down to the ground. We call for Thunder once more, and it connects again for another one-shot. So, with two attacks, Babu has wiped out Gyarados and Floatzel. When Wake sends out Quagsire, we recall Persian and send out Ekans. Intimidate kicks in early, which does help in lessening the damage from Rock 2. It lowers Raida's speed, but she's still faster and paralyzes Quagsire with Glare. The paralysis doesn't keep Quagsire from attacking, but thanks to Intimidate, Mudshot doesn't knock out Ekans. We make another switch out to Duskull, and the Ghost-type dodges a Mudshot thanks to Levitate. Crossbone starts out with Curse, which halves his HP before a fairly pathetic Rock Tomb lands. With the Curse laid, Duskull and Quagsire go back and forth with Nightshade and Rock Tomb until Wake uses a Hyper Potion. As it turns out, it makes very little difference in the end, because Nightshade and Curse combine to finish off Quagsire before Rock Tomb can do anything. That earns us the Fen Badge without any real issues, so let's move on. After a series of attacks, we head to the ruins of Celestic Town to take on the Team Galactic leader, Cyrus. The Dark Knight Specialist has a team of three, so that's how many cards we'll need to draw. For our first face-off with Cyrus, we'll be using the team of Mew, okay, Starmie, and Jinx. Great! Probably the best team we've ever had in this series, and it's a trio of psychic types for a battle against a Dark Type trainer. Seems about right. Anyway, let's go through the movesets. Up first, we've got Nebula the Starmie at level 34, and it has Bubble Beam, Confuse Ray, Recover, and Swift. Rubu Z the Mew is up next, also at 34, and we've got Psychic, Metronome, Mega Punch, and Transform on hand here. Not the best, but it'll have to do. Finally, we've got Jinkies the Jinx at level 36, and her moveset's made up of Powder Snow, Lovely Kiss, Fake Tears, and Ice Punch. Alright, this could be tough, but it's a strong team, so let's see how this goes. Cyrus sends out his Sneasel for starters, and we kick things off with Starmie. Nebula starts things with a Bubble Beam that leaves Sneasel below half health as Cyrus calls for Screech. That essentially gives us a free pass to get the battle going with a win. A second Bubble Beam knocks out Sneasel to give us the early lead. When Cyrus sends out his Murkrow, we recall Nebula and send out Jinx. Faint Attack one-shots Jinkies before she can even get set, so that went well. We send Starmie back in and call for Bubble Beam once more. Murkrow's Citrus Berry keeps him above half health, and another Faint Attack leaves Nebula weak. Yet again though, Starmie scores a two-hit KO with Bubble Beam to put us back in front. Cyrus' final team member is Golbat, but we've already figured out the issues with switching out, so Nebula stays in to use Confuse Ray. Golbat still manages to bite Starmie, but it lives on 1 HP, so we make another switch out to Mew. The confusion then pays off as Golbat hits himself when going for Bite. We could almost certainly finish things with Psychic here, but I'm a sucker for Metronome, so try once to see what we get. Rubu Z attacks with a Mega Drain that Golbat quad resists, so that definitely worked out. Golbat's confusion messes him up again before Mew blows him away with Psychic. If Cyrus' third team member had been a Dark type instead of a Golbat, then I think we would have really struggled. Also, it's pretty lucky that the worst team we've ever drawn as far as typing goes was probably the all-around strongest. Anyway, that's another win, so let's jump forward to Canalave City. The rival battle with Barry and Canalave seems to give me issues in just about every run through Platinum. Let's hope for a good team. We'll need five, and we're going to be using Magnemite, Nidoran Mail, Drowsy, Abra, and Plusel. Alright, not a great range of typings and not a single evolved Pokemon. Not exactly ideal. Maybe the movesets will inspire some confidence? Atticus the Plusel's at level 38, and he's got the moves Thunder, Thunder Wave, Fake Tears, and Quick Attack? 
Mido the Magnemite's up next to level 36, and along with Thunder and Thunder Wave, it's got Screech and Sonic Boom. Venno the Nidoran's at level 37, and his moveset's made up of Poison Jab, Toxic Spikes, Horn Attack, and Double Kick. At level 35, Eerie the Drowsy has Psybeam, Hypnosis, Disable, and Headbutt. Finally, we've got Miller the Abra who has Reflect, Shockwave, Grass Knot, and Hidden Power. That Hidden Power is Flying type, which should come in handy against Barry's Heracross. Okay, it's a fairly weak team, but let's see how this goes. The battle begins with Barry's Star Raptor facing off against our Plusle. Intimidate lowers Atticus's attack stat, but as we learned against Crash Awake, that doesn't lessen the impact of Thunder. The skies open up and Star Raptor's blasted by the Thunder, finishing him off to give us the first win of the match. Barry sends in his Rapidash next, and we start things off by calling for Thunder Wave. The Fire Horse ignores the paralysis and charges down Plusle with takedown, scoring a critical hit. Knowing it's probably his last chance to use a move, Atticus goes for fake tears before a takedown knocks him out. We send out Abra second, and thanks to all of the setup from Plusle, the single shockwave is good for the knockout on Rapidash. Seeing a psychic type in front of him, Barry calls on Heracross next, which is exactly what we planned for. Miller uses his speed to strike with his HP flying before Heracross can attack, and as it's quite effective, it makes for an easy one-shot. Empoleon's up next for Barry, and we start by calling for Shockwave. The fully evolved Water Starter soaks up the hit well and then counters with a powerful Metal Claw. Abra is incredibly weak from the hit but evens things up with a Shockwave before Fury Attack earns Empoleon the KO. We send in Magnemite and predicting a heal, we call for Thunder Wave. Barry goes for Bubble Beam instead though and it one-shots Mido, so not a great play on my part. We go out to Nidoran who lands a kick on the Paralyzed Steel type to take Barry down to 1. Roserade's up last for our rival and after he sprays Toxic Spikes on our side of the field, Venno lands a Poison Jab. We make a switch out to Drowsy, who's poisoned on entry before being surrounded by a second layer of Toxic Spikes. Giga Drain helps Rosary to recover a small bit, but it's not enough. Eerie attacks with Psybeam, knocking out Rosary to hand us another win over our rival. With that out of the way, we can move on to the Canalave City Gym. That's where we'll find Byron, Sinnoh's resident steel specialist. We're gonna need a team of three for this one, and again, it'll need to be pretty strong. For the sixth Sinnoh Gym battle, we're gonna be using the team of Electabuzz, Clefable, and Hitmonchan. That's another really solid team. An Electro-type isn't great against the trio including Steelix and Magneton, but it's a really strong Pokemon, so at least we've got that. Let's see what moves this team has. Our Clefable Myth is up first at level 38, and her moveset's made up of Metronome, Sing, Minimize, and Moonlight. That's kind of a weird one, but we'll figure it out. Next up, we've got Ellie the Electabuzz, one level lower at 37, and she's got Thunder Punch, Leer, Quick Attack, and Low Kick. That final move will definitely come in handy against some heavy steel types. Finally, we've got Hook the Hitmonchan, our ace at level 41, and his moves are Muck Punch, Fire Punch, Mega Punch, and Sky Uppercut. That moveset is enough to make me confident. Let's get into it. Byron starts the battle by sending out his Magneton, and we get going with Clefable. Sing instantly puts the bag of bolts to sleep, at which point we can return to having some fun with Metronome. The randomized move that Myth pulls out is Gyro Ball. So, in two uses of Metronome, we've pulled out two quad resisted moves. Good stuff. Magneton wakes up but misses with Metal Sound, after which Sing puts it straight back to sleep. Real important contribution there. Another Metronome becomes Aero Blast, so we're now 3 for 3 on moves that are 4 times ineffective. That seems unbelievably unlikely. Not quite as improbable as 4 though. Bullet Punch completes the quartet before Clefable makes up for all of the horrible move selections. Myth's 4th and our 5th metronome of the episode becomes Fissure. A quad effective Oko move. That'll do Myth, that'll do. Byron sends out his Steelix next, but before doing anything, Sing puts him to sleep. Clefable's done plenty here, so we recall her and send out Electabuzz. While Steelix is sleeping, Ellie lands a low kick that almost gets the Steel Snake down to half health. Another low kick leaves him just above red health before he wakes up and uses Earthquake. That's not great for Ellie. It's an easy one shot that levels up the match, so we bring Clefable back out. Byron uses a full restore and Myth succeeds with Sing again. Clefable just does not care about the odds, good or bad. To the shock of everyone watching on, Metronome does not become a quad resisted rock type move, just a regular not very effective arrow blast. Another Metronome translates to Conversion 2, which does… nothing? I usually have a lot more fun with Metronome. Steelix awakens and uses Sandstorm, but that's not too worrying. Clefable then, of course, connects with a fifth consecutive sing. At this point, the game was clearly sick of my uses of Metronome, so forced to switch with Baton Pass. Hitmonchan enters the battle at an unfortunate time as Steelix wakes up and attacks with Earthquake. 
It doesn't knock out Hook though, so he's able to land a Sky Uppercut that devastates Steelix to give us back the lead. When Bastiodon enters the battle, I'm a bit worried about losing Hitmonchan, so make another switch out to Clefable. Unfortunately, Byron uses Iron Defense, which makes my job a lot harder. When Myth finally fails to connect with Sing, another Iron Defense raises Bastiodon's defense further. Sing lands at the second attempt, and having seemingly forgotten my plan, I go for another Metronome. We get another useless conversion too, but I'm stubborn, so go again, getting another pointless refresh. Another Metronome becomes Rest. I mean, why am I doing this? There's actually no PP left for Metronome at this point, so I now have to power on with Sing. Bastiodon wakes up and attacks with Stone Edge, and then a taunt forces Myth to use Struggle. Before long, Recoil Damage finishes off Myth, so now we're in a scary one-on-one. -on -one. Bastiodon's defense has been massively raised, and Hitmonchan is weak. Hook enters the battle and lands a Sky Uppercut, but it's not enough for a knockout. Thankfully, Stone Edge is not very effective, so Hitmonchan lives to fight another round. Despite the healing from his Citrus Berry, Bastiodon falls to Sky Uppercut, so even though I made it massively harder than it needed to be, we got over the line. Hook has earned us the Mind Badge, so that's now 6 out of 8 Gym Badges won. Sorry about the massive gap between these last two episodes, they will be more regular from here on out. Anyway, that'll do it for this one. We'll be dealing with Team Galactic and then heading to Snowbell City next time. Until then though, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.